Benjamin Netanyahu has strengthened his control over the Israel-Gaza war. The Israeli Prime Minister has ended the six-member war cabinet. He has dissolved the National Unity Government formed when the war started in October 2023. A move that exposes the rift between Netanyahu and the Israeli military. Now the big question is what happens next? What does this mean for the war in Gaza? Let's find out. Here's what's happened today. At around 2.30 p.m. IST, it was reported that the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had disbanded his inner war cabinet. Israeli officials broke the news to Israeli media on Monday, but the decision was announced on Sunday evening. The Israeli Prime Minister had announced the decision at a meeting of the Political Security Cabinet the previous evening, but it did not come as a surprise. It was clear that Netanyahu's far-right coalition partners had been advocating for a new war cabinet. And this pressure, you see, was building since the centrist leader, Benny Gantz, quit the emergency government. The war cabinet was formed after Gantz had joined Netanyahu at the start of the war. But earlier this month, Gantz left the wartime government. And what was the reason for his decision? Well, just to put it simply, Netanyahu's failure to form a strategy for the Gaza war. Gantz cited the Israeli Prime Minister's failure to devise a future for the Gaza Strip. After Gantz's departure from the government, Netanyahu faced growing calls from the far-right members of his coalition, namely the Finance Minister Bezalel Smotrich and the National Security Minister Itamir ben Gwir to join the war cabinet. And for months, ben Gwir and Smotrich have pressured Netanyahu to oppose a ceasefire plan that would involve releasing Israeli hostages. They have insisted, in fact, that Netanyahu keep his original promise to achieve total victory against Hamas. And they also push for Israeli reoccupation of the Gaza Strip, a policy move that the Israeli defense leaders staunchly oppose. However, Netanyahu turned them down. He feared that meeting their demands would intensify the strains with international partners, including Israel's most important ally, the US. So rather than let them into the war cabinet, Netanyahu dissolved it. In fact, Ben Gwir and Smotrich's continued influence, even from outside the war cabinet, was one of the reasons for the resignation of Benny Gantz last week. Gantz, a centrist, had said that he had joined the cabinet to ensure that the war was conducted responsibly. But he has since concluded that it is Netanyahu who poses insurmountable obstacles for Israel. How exactly? by refusing to commit to a day-after strategy for Gaza. But all this was last week. What triggered the latest move by Netanyahu then? With Gantz's resignation a week ago, Netanyahu reportedly told ministers that the war cabinet was no longer necessary. It's important to note here that this move comes amid a difference of opinion between Netanyahu and senior IDF commanders. On Sunday, Netanyahu reportedly criticized plans announced by the military to hold daily tactical pauses in fighting along one of the main roads into Gaza. The idea basically is to facilitate the delivery of aid. But according to the Israeli official, when Netanyahu heard the reports of an 11-hour humanitarian pause, he turned to his military secretary and said that this was unacceptable to him. On the same day, while announcing his decision to, to disband the war cabinet, Netanyahu stated, and I'm quoting, in order to reach the goal of eliminating the capabilities of Hamas, he had made decisions that were not always acceptable to the military echelon. He also criticized the military, saying, we have a country with an army, not an army with a country. And Netanyahu's actions suggesting increased confidence, increasing confidence. His poll numbers have also improved since Gantz's departure, causing Gantz's polling to decline significantly. Opinion polls suggest that most Israelis support the government's aim of destroying Hamas. So then what does Netanyahu hope to achieve from this decision? Two things. First of all, the decision is a deliberate snub to Netanyahu's far-right allies in the coalition, including the National Security Minister, Itamar ben Gwir, who had been eyeing a seat in the war cabinet after Gantz's departure. And now Netanyahu will make decisions in meetings with his own advisors instead of having to listen to ben Gwir. 
A new war cabinet with heavy influence enjoyed by Smotrich and Ben Guer would have further tested relations with allies like the U.S. and Netanyahu needs the support of the U.S. Remember, Washington is still supplying Israel with arms and there has been little to show that Netanyahu wants to stop his war in Gaza. Secondly, and but perhaps most importantly, the move gives Netanyahu more power, more control over decision making. When it comes to the war with Hamas in Gaza and Hezbollah in Lebanon, which then brings me to the all-important question. How will the dissolution of the war cabinet actually affect the Israel-Gaza war? Apparently, the impact will be minimal. Decision-making will reportedly shift back to the security cabinet with potential significant political ramifications. Netanyahu will reportedly hold discussions about the Gaza war with a small group of ministers, including the defense minister, Yuav Gallant, and the strategic affairs minister, Ron Dermer. Reports saying that Netanyahu will now use sort of a kitchen cabinet. He will speak to some smaller advisors on what decisions to take regarding the continued prosecution of the war. As far as the situation in Gaza is concerned, at least 37,347 Palestinians have been killed, 85,372 injured since the war started. The fighting, especially in Rafah, has created a humanitarian crisis and now Israel is under international pressure to address the issue. Across the border with Lebanon, the Israelis are moving closer to a larger war with Hezbollah. In recent weeks, in fact, fighting between Israel and Hezbollah has intensified. Could it lead to a wider escalation? Quite possibly. And in that case, a wider conflict could have devastating consequences for the already volatile region. The next 24 hours will present a better picture. To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.